Hey, what's up guys? Cool here. Welcome to another episode of Good Gun or Polished Tur. Today we are going to be discussing the M20 Basilisk and its variants. But before we get started, I do want to remind you that even though I'll probably be using some stats and some facts in this video, it ultimately, my recommendation is going to come down to my opinion and how I feel it performs on its respected vehicles. Now, if you've played Planetside 2, and I'm sure you have since you're watching this video, you've probably used the Basilisk at some point on some vehicle. Now, when it comes to the Basilisk pre-performance update 02, I heard a lot of varying opinions on this weapon. A lot of people would say they absolutely loved it, and then a lot of people would say they hated it, and you'd get the middle, of course, as well. And the reason for that is because this weapon is basically a jack-of-all-trades master of nothing type weapon. That's why it is the starting weapon on all ground vehicles in the game. They want to give you the opportunity to be able to kill anything with it, but you're not going to be able to kill anything as quickly as you would with other type weapons that are more specific to their roles. So then the question was, and I guess still is, is this weapon's versatility enough to make you want to use it over, over some of the other more popular weapon choices out there? And previous to Performance Update 02, the answer for me was definitely not. Uh, the only vehicle that I would ever really use this on was a Sunder, because you could have two vehicle weapons on there, and you could use one for a more specific role, and then just have the Basilisk kind of as a backup in case you encountered any type of situation. And even though the MBTs do have two weapons, as well they just have better all-around choices than the Sunder did so basically I didn't use this all that often if at all now Sony must have felt similar to how I did because they gave this weapon a decent little buff and that's what I'm gonna read now uh, the fire rate has been increased from 300 rounds per minute to 400 rounds per minute the maximum damage has been reduced from 275 to 250 the maximum damage range reduced from 75 to 10 meters minimum damage reduced from 200 to 167 minimum damage range increased from 75 to 130 starting cone of fire reduced from 0.5 degrees to 0.3 degrees maximum cone of fire increase from 0.5 degrees to 0.7 degrees cone of fire recoil increase from 0.1 degrees per shot to 0.125 degrees cone of fire recovers more quickly they added a lag shot multiplier of negative 0.1 and the ammo resupply now grants 60 rounds per tick instead of 25, and this is actually at 100 rounds per tick on the Sunder version. Now, the only difference between the normal Basilisk that you'd use on an MBT or a Sunder and the Harasser and Flash versions are that its minimum damage is only 60 meters as opposed to 130. So just reading that off, it sounds like they actually nerfed it more than they buffed it, but that's not the case. When going from 300 to 400 rounds per minute, they had to do some stuff to offset the weapon against infantry. Uh, if they didn't do this stuff, then the Basilisk would just be too good against infantry, and there'd be no reason to use guns like the Cobalt or the Empire-specific anti-infantry weapons. But by buffing it the way they did, they kept it pretty much the same against infantry, but gave it a pretty good buff against armor, where I felt the Basilisk was lacking the most prior to Performance Update 02. So I do like this little buff that Sony gave the Basilisk. You can definitely notice the rate of fire increase. It does feel a little bit smoother. You can definitely notice notice its increase against armor and air vehicles, even though you're still not going to be lighting up air vehicles from miles away. But you shouldn't, because this weapon still fits that uh, jack-of-all-trades, master-of-nothing role. It just does it a little bit better now. Another great thing about this buff is that since all ground vehicles do start off with a basilisk this should help out new players as well so just in case you are wondering i did do a little time trial with the basilisk against the other empire specific anti-armor weapons and you're going to see that it has a much slower time to kill in this ideal situation right directly behind an mbt the vulcan is just going to shred these because that is the ideal situation for these weapons we know it loses a little bit of luster the further you get out uh the saron enforcer are about the same and the basilisk does take about twice as long as both the saron and enforcer now that shows how much weaker it is in the ideal situation, but the Basilisk does have some advantages. It is much easier to use. If you miss shots with the Saron, with the Enforcer, or even with the Vulcan, 
you're going to vastly increase your time to kill. Missing a couple shots with the Basilisk isn't going to really affect it too much. It's just much easier to stay on target and much more forgiving. Another nice thing that I like about using the Basilisk is it constantly keeps pressure on your targets. They are constantly getting that tink, 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 and it's kind of frightening in a way when you're receiving that because it's just never ending, especially if you have the extended mags on the Basilisk. And the other obvious advantage with the Basilisk is it's going to be better against air. Unless you're just an incredible aim with the Enforcer or Saron, you're not going to be hitting too many air targets. And even with the Vulcan now, since it's nerf, it does have uh, you know a really big spread when you start shooting targets very far away. So it's not going to be incredibly effective against air unless they're basically hovering right over you. So the Basilisk is definitely better in that department. Now against infantry, it kind of could go either way if you are accurate with those weapons then you can do pretty well against infantry, but the Basilisk, again, is just more forgiving in that department as well. So when it comes to the Basilisk anti-infantry capabilities compared to that of the anti-infantry specific weapons, I would pretty much choose any of them over the Basilisk for that role. The Cobalt's absolutely going to chew this up. The Canister is good in close range. Uh, you know, a lot of people don't give that weapon any credit at all. But the Basilisk, even at further ranges, is going to be hard to hit targets, especially if they're moving, because that cone of fire does open up quite a bit. Now, if you compare it to the PPA, I'd much rather have the PPA. And even the Marauder, I would rather use. However, I could see somebody choosing the Basilisk just because the Marauder is grenade launcher and you might not like that style of weapon. The big thing here is... Those weapons cannot damage heavy armor, so I can't really recommend them using them ever on an MBT or even really a Sunday. The only time I would really use those over a Basilisk would be maybe on a Flash or Harasser where you have a more specific role. Now, I didn't directly compare the Basilisk to the anti-air weapons because they kind of suffer from the same dilemma as the anti-infantry weapons, where they're just too specific for me, and I'm not a big fan of that. I did, however, pit it against the Halberd. The Halberd kills around the same time as the Enforcer and the Saron. The one nice thing about the Halberd that the Saron and Enforcer do not have is that they will kill infantry in one hit if the infantry is not wearing flak armor. So the main choice here is, do you want the most versatile possible or do you want something that's going to fill that more specific role and the vehicle using is going to make your choice a lot easier in my opinion you can't always account for the situation but you can always account for what vehicle you're going to spawn or what vehicle you're going to be getting in so starting from the smallest going to the largest on the flash i think the basilisk is a good option i have seen people going some crazy kill streaks with the basilisk with a cloaked flash now personally i kind of like the fury a little bit more just because you don't have to be as precise but the basilisk is a good option. On the Harasser, this is the one vehicle that I probably would never use a Basilisk on. In its current state, the Harasser is all about hit and run and killing fast, and that's something that the Basilisk is not especially great at. It's more versatile, it's not about fast killing, so I would rather use something else on the Harasser. In an MBT, it really comes down to the type of battle you're in. In most situations, I'd probably rather have a Halberd or one of the Empire-specific anti-armor weapons, but if you're you're in one of them big battles where there's a great mixture of infantry, armor, and a lot of air flying around, the Basilisk is a great way to protect you from that air. Now, when it comes to the Sunder, that's where I think the Basilisk really shines. The Sunder, you never quite know what situation you're going to be getting into, especially if you're transporting troops across an open field. You can encounter infantry, armor, and air all around the same time, so the Basilisk is a great weapon for that, even if you just put one of them on there. Overall, I think this was a good little buff. I really like the Basilisk now. Not that I really disliked it before, but it does just feel a little more effective and makes me want to use it a little bit more. Whereas before, I pretty much replaced it on every vehicle. So I definitely give this weapon my good gun seal of approval, which means absolutely nothing. And if I had to give it a overall rating, pit it against all other ground vehicle weapons, I would give it a solid 8, which again means absolutely nothing. So anyways guys, that's all I have. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all later. I can pick that up now, if you want me to. Oh, you can get it. It's fine.